Professor Eisenman. Thank you for that very kind introduction. What we are treating here is a vast subject. And uh, I find in the Western world, in any event, uh, very little famili familiarity with it. So what I would like to do, if you'll permit me, is to go back over the broad sweep of history to try to explain to you, in the first place, how the Jews and the Muslims got to Spain, uh, what the effect of their coming there was, and what the cultural achievements that they brought with them that in fact uh, fueled the uh, scientific and intellectual uh, fervor in the backgrounds of that country leading not only to Columbus's uh, voyages but uh, many of the other voyages uh, that were being undertaken at the same time and in the same period. So what I would like to do is explain first of, you, first of all for you is how, for instance, the Jews got to um, Spain. The Jews actually came to Spain at a very early time uh, it isn't clear whether Phoenicians and Jews can really be distinguished from each other. If you know the Bible at all, you will recall that uh, uh, King Solomon, the fabled uh, builder of the temple in Jerusalem in about 1950 BC, was uh, married to the daughter of Hiram of Tyre. Hiram of Tyre is a Phoenician. So uh, the Jews and the, and the Phoenicians, in fact, Hiram of Tyre, helped in the construction of Solomon's temple. And so the Jews and the Phoenicians were very closely connected very early on. And we know about the Phoenician commercial voyages across the Mediterranean, North Africa, and finally into um, Spain. And many of the early colonies that were put down were put down by the Phoenicians in this 1000 BC period that we are talking about. So when we're speaking about, for instance, a Phoenician colony, colony like Carthage or some of the colonies along the southern coast of um, Spain, we are also probably uh, speaking about the first Jewish penetration of, uh, of um, Spain at the same time. So we go back to 1000 BC there. Later on, it is probable that Jewish merchants and commercial people came into Spain along with the Roman legions. So you get this uh, pretty early uh, Jewish penetration in um, Spain. Now, as far as the Muslims go, we should probably first trace how Spain was on the eve of the Muslim conquest. Uh, if you're familiar at all with Roman history, you will remember that the uh, so-called Goths, the Visigoths, and if you think where these people came from, the Goths, the Goths were a Nordic people, a Germanic people, in fact, there's a city today in Sweden uh, named after the Goths, uh, Gothenburg, Gothenburg, if you've heard of it. So really you have to think of these people as northern Germanic uh, Teutonic tribesmen of some kind. The Visigoths sacked Rome in the early 400s, among other barbarian groups, barbarians so-called by the Roman uh, 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 writers. Uh, but in any case, many of these groups were sent on to Spain and further on. One of the earlier groups, that sacked Rome, that was sent on into uh, Spain by the uh, Romans. In other words, the Romans, to a certain extent, bought these, these groups off. They suggested or bribed them to consider that it was more propitious to move on to Spain and North Africa. <coughs> One of the earlier groups were the Vandals, if you've heard of them. They sacked Rome in the late 300s. And it is the Vandals that gave their name to Islamic Spain. For instance, the Vandals would have gone on through Spain in the late 300s and on into North Africa, which was considered the breadbasket of the Roman Empire. So the Vandals would have gone into North Africa, and when the Arab armies came through and they met the remnants of the 